Hey y'all, it's Andrea with The Cutest Little Thing. Thanks so much for hopping on to watch this video today. If you enjoy thrift flips, DIYs, home decor, upcycling, and all of the things, then you're at the right place. If you've never been to my channel before, welcome and I hope you like what you see. And if you've hung out with me before, thank you so much for coming back. All right, let's get started with today's projects. For this project, I had several pans like this that I had in my stash, these frying pans, and I'm just giving them all a good clean and a wipe down. And first, I'm going in with the color ink in the Waverly, and I'm just giving this entire frying pan a good coat of this chalk paint. over the inside and then when I get the inside done I'll do the outside and around the handle as well even on the bottom and just paint over the entire thing and I had several of these I think I had a total of five pans all together that I grabbed out of my stash now I'm taking just some regular Elmer school glue and I'm mixing that chalk paint in with that Elmer's glue. And I'm going over each pan again with another coat of the black chalk paint with the Elmer's school glue mixed in. And giving it a quick dry with my blow dryer. And believe it or not that elmer school glue sort of creates a sealer in that paint and just helps that paint adhere to the surface now this pan had some sort of slick non-stick um i can't get my words uh some sort of non-stick material on it so i just took my sandpaper and just scuffed it up before I painted over it with my chalk paint mixture. And now I'm just taking my sponge brush and sort of dabbing it on, just dabbing it over the bottom of that pen, just creating a sort of a texture. Okay, I'm getting my images that I printed off of Etsy, or I purchased them off of Etsy. Now I'm going on there to print them. And I just wanted to show y'all the process of how I size them and everything. And I just print them right out on regular computer paper. And I'm going in now with DIY Clear Wax. And I'm just coating, I'm not coating the inside bottom part of the pan because that's where we're going to be decoupaging on our image. But I just went around the sides with that DIY clear wax. Now I'm going right on top of that before it dries with my antique wax. And while all of that wax is still wet, I sprinkle on regular ground cinnamon. And I take my finger and just kind of rub that cinnamon into that wax. And this is sort of creating a rust look on our pan. And you just want to sprinkle that cinnamon while that wax is still wet. You don't want to let it dry. And then just rub it right in with your finger. And you can sprinkle as much or as little of that cinnamon as you want. Here, I'm just going and putting a nice, generous coat of my Mod Podge matte right on the bottom of that pan. I'm just trimming my image to fit right into that pan, just making sure I've got that Mod Podge applied over the entire area where my image will be and where it will touch. You want to have a Mod Podge so that it will adhere like it should and it won't try to roll up or anything and get it all the way to those edges. And I will include the links to these Etsy shops that I 
that each image would was purchased from. And with that balled up piece of saran wrap, I just rub over my image and that helps take care of any creases or wrinkles that try to come up in my paper. And being this is a curved surface, you won't, most likely you won't get out every single wrinkle, but I don't mind a little bit of wrinkle because that just gives more of a vintage antique look in my opinion. Now here I'm taking my coffee grunge mix and just brushing over that paper just so that it will blend better with my rusty look pan there. And if you're not familiar with coffee grunge, I love it. It's pretty much like a coffee stain. You just add your instant coffee and some spices and vanilla. And if you want more of uh, more in-depth recipe, you can comment and I'll be glad to share that with you. Here is just some antique wax in the Waverly. I'm brushing right over my entire pan, even the handle, and this not only creates a nice look over that black paint, it gives it more of an antique look, but it also acts as a sealer and just seals in that paint. And here I'm doing the technique just a little bit different. I'm Mod Podging my image on first with my, using my Mod Podge there and my balled up piece of saran wrap. And now I'm just using my blow dryer just to speed up that drying process and to get that image to adhere. Now I'm brushing on that antique wax all around my image and I'm just sprinkling on cinnamon right onto that antique wax while it is still wet and just doing the same thing I did earlier, just rubbing it in with my finger. And guys, here are all of the pans. Look how cute these are. Here is some cute little tags that I purchased off of an Etsy shop. And again, I will include those links in the description. And I'm just cutting those out. I want to create cute little tags for these pans. I'm just taking that Elmer's glue right on that cardboard tag. And it's acting as a Mod Podge. And just gluing that right to that tag. And now I just took pieces of burlap, strips, and lace, and I'm creating one of those cute, messy crisscross bows and just tying it all together with my jute string. Of course, we have to complete these with a bow. If you hang out for me very long, you know that I love a bow on almost anything. I'm just trimming those up getting everything nice and even and attaching that cute little tag that we made onto that bow as well and I'm just putting a little dab of hot glue to hold that tag in place so it's not flip flopping everywhere and I dab some hot glue on that handle to hold that bow in place, but I'm also taking that excess jute string in the back and giving it a good double knot just to give it some extra security back there and extra hold. And look how cute that is, guys. And I'm just going to seal all of these up with my Mod Podge Matte Spray Sealer once I'm all done with them. I will take them outside and give them a good spray. And that will be just an extra sealer for these, just sealing in that cinnamon and the paint, the waxes, and, and our, um, our images that we printed. <clears throat> and there's another one complete with that cute rusty star embellished with that rusty star. Now for this pan, I have these cute little farmhouse stamps and my ink here. I purchased these off of Amazon. I will include that in the description as well. And I'm just inking up that stamp and I'm going to stamp that little chicken head right onto that tag. Super cute. 
And I'm just attaching that right to that ribbon and embellishing with those that little rusty star in the center. I'm just attaching that. And guys, you'll notice on this pan, I did not paint that handle the, the way that it was, the material and everything. And it was already black, so I didn't feel a need to, um, to paint over that. And there's another finished one, you guys. I just love these. I think they are super cute farmhouse decor. Let me know what you think. For this project, I have this frame with this painted cat on it. I had it in my stash. It is real wood. I love that wood frame, the color of it and everything, but we're going to change up this image here. So I'm taking a piece of 80 grit sandpaper. It's a really rough piece of sandpaper and I'm just sanding over that painted image. Now I'm going in with my fusion paint here in the color raw silk. And I'm just going to apply this paint over this entire wood piece here. And I end up doing two coats of that paint just to make sure that painted image there was completely covered. I didn't want any peek through or bleed through of that bright paint that was underneath. Now I have this cute little farmhouse stencil that I purchased from Amazon with another, it's like in a whole pack of lots of different transfers, not transfers, stencils. So I'm going in with the color ink in the Waverly, which is a black chalk paint, and I'm just stenciling on that paint with my stencil brush. And I dab my paintbrush into the paint and then I dab it onto the plate. Just sort of offload some of that paint because when you're stenciling, you don't want to use too much paint. Because that could cause smears and bleeds. And I sort of do a dabbing motion, but I also go with a back and forth motion. And that just helps get in those little letters and things a little bit better than just the dabbing motion. And I also do two coats. I do, I go around the entire stencil and then I let that dry and then I go around again a second time. And then I peel away that stencil for the big reveal. And look how cute that is, guys. I love these little farmhouse images. I love all the, the cows, the chickens, and all of that stuff. I put it back in my frame, and that was simple as that. Thanks again for watching today, guys. Let me know what you think of these projects in the comments, and I will see you on our next video.